and Sean. I'm back. We're going to do a book haul. Um, I'm practically in my pajamas. Oh, it's Sunday, so we're allowed. Yes. And it's after this, well. it's a bit cold. Yeah. After this, I'm going to start One Piece with my One Piece candle and some red wine. And I'm going to make it a Sunday ritual. It's Sunday afternoon, it's War and Peace, red wine candle. Can we have some pasta as well? Yeah. Do you want to start the haul, as I think you've got more books than okay. me? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so recently Sean went home to Aberystwyth and in a second-hand bookshop called... Estwith Books. It, if you are aware of Aberystwyth, it used to be like a proper bookshop. And I'm, I guess it just isn't anymore. I don't think it is. And um, it used to be kind of quite a good secondhand bookshop where I remember it used to sell my books to, um, and then they, you know they get store credit from them, mm. that kind of place. Mm. But I don't think that exists anymore. But now they have like a room in this really lovely um, deli cafe called Medina's. Do you want to do your Max Medina joke? You can think of Max Medina from Gilmore Girls when you're in there. Okay, so while she was there, she really <laughs> kindly bought me um, a tree on fire by Alan Silito, who is one of my favourite authors, um, in a really lovely edition. Um, and on further research, I discovered it was book two in a trilogy, and, and then had to, sadly, buy myself book one, which is The Death of William Posters in the same edition. In, in my defence, there's no mention of it being There a, isn't, no. no. There's, there's no way. And I, I would have had to have looked it up. It doesn't say yeah. anywhere on the book. They're not ones that I've heard of. Um, they, I think they come just after um, Saturday Night and Sunday Morning and The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner, so the, his famous, famous books. Um, I love Alan Silito. I think um, The Ragman's Daughter is one of my favourite short stories of all time, um, and Lo Loneliness of a Long Distance Runner as well. Um, so I'm hoping these are going to be great, and I think they will. Um, I'm not really sure what they're about, but I'm looking forward to them. The design is so beautiful. So nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nice font. All books should look like that. And then we went to Bristol, which is in England. Bristol, England. <laughs> so we took a trip to England on the train and we went to two bookshops. We went to Arnolfini, which is a contemporary art gallery, which is currently shut, mm -hmm. but the bookshop is open yeah. and the cafe. And the bookshop is quite small, really, isn't it? Yeah. But it has like a really good collection of books. Yeah, the like, it's really good. It's really worth well taking a little and, trip. Yeah, I definitely. Think. Yeah. So we're going to go once a month, did we say? I thought every once two every, months. Every two months. Yeah. And it's got, so it's got fiction and it's got a really nice non fiction. Yeah. And then it's got less art and art theory books than it used to have, I think. Mm. But it's still got art books, um, kind of gifty stuff, and kids' books as well. Yeah. Anyway, we bought a few books um, and hopefully there. hopefully that family that was really loud and obnoxious when we were there won't be there again. Carry on. <laughs> they were asking about the... Um, what's his name? They wanted some limited edition yeah. art stuff. Is there paperwork with this? Um, yeah, but really loud. Just shouting across the While room. I was trying to browse. <laughs> um, this is one that I bought, though. I bought this for you. Um, it's like a little zini pamphlet type thing, and it's called... Um, to Run Wild in it, A Handbook of Autonomic Tarot by David Keenan and Sophie Hollington. And we haven't really looked at this yet. No, not properly. Um, so I don't really know what it's about. And I don't know what autonomic means. No. <laughs> Possibly should have checked that yeah. first. Mm. Or in relation to tarot. But we know we, we, know we like tarot. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So. Um, yeah. yeah. But it says it's an experimental novella. Yeah, he wrote um, uh, a novel called This is a Memorial Device. From, it came out about a year ago, maybe two years ago. It looked, looked interesting, which is about like a made-up band. So I think it's, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, nice, it's just like it? a nice little thing, yeah. isn't it? And it's got really lovely image inside. Images. Um, it, I like the dedication, which is dedicated to motorcycles, miniskirts, handguns and dark rom romantic poetry. And then on the back it said, Reading seriously enlightens you and those around you. Um, yeah. Oh, it also says an accompanying deck. Oh. Might have to... Buy the deck. Might have to. Um, so in the Arnolfini, I found um, a book which I've had my eye on for a while, which is Pure Hollywood by Christine Schutt, um, which is a short story collection. I'm guessing all set around Hollywood, LA. Um, it's recommended on the back by Tessa Moshfe, who I 
think is brilliant and so I'm guessing it's going to be along those kind of lines. Um, I don't read a huge amount of short story collections. I find them sometimes a little bit... Too... You used to more, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I did used to. I've changed. <laughs> I, they can be a bit too quirky sometimes for me. Yeah. Like, mm. But... Um, I think you have a low tolerance for quirk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's a, a, an, a, an author that's been around for a while, apparently. So what gets me easiest is people's like debut short story collections, and it's just kind of throwing everything at them. So I think this looks interesting and good. And I got um, a book to match my nails again. Mm. All books I've been buying have been matching my nails. Yep. And this is How to Write an Autobiographical Novel by Alexander Chi. And it's essays, which I didn't quite realise. I mean, I knew it was non-fiction, but yeah. it's kind of an essay collection. And it's one that I've had in my like wish list online for ages and just haven't got around to buying, but I've heard it's really great. Yeah, I've heard it's great. Um, so, yes. Um, I got Family Lexicon by Natalia Ginsberg, who is... Beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Done. It's a fellow Italian. Um, I feel it's my duty to read her. She's supposed to be one of the great Italian authors. There's some new editions of her books that have just recently come out, um, which I think are lovely. This is a, I think, a 60s novel. Um, she writes about Italian domestic life, family life, um, but she's supposed to be brilliant. And this is, um, there's a recommendation on the back from Maggie Nelson and Rachel Cusk. Um, and Tessa Hadley. And Tessa Hadley, like. Hermione Lee. So yeah, I think all the right people are saying all the right things about her. So yeah, looking forward to that one also. And this one I got, I think it was from the... More the art yeah, theory was, section. Yeah. Did you find this one? No, I don't think so. And this is um, the Estrangement Principle by Ariel, Gold Ariel Goldberg, and it's got this great cover. Um, it doesn't really tell you anything about it, and I don't really know what it's about, but it seems to be about queerness, and she's using queer in inverted commas as well. Mm. Um, and then when I flick through it, it's talking. It does talk about uh, Michelle T and Eileen Miles quite early on. Um, can I read the back or is that annoying? No, it sounds interesting. Because the back, yeah, the, it says, I began, so I'm assuming this is just from the book. Mm. I began collecting the phrase queer art in all its sweaty megaphone pronouncements. I felt pricked by queer art, which I heard being uttered all around me in the titles of group shows, dance parties, anthologies, mission statements, press releases. I was also collecting palpable silences around events that could have used the word queer but didn't. I had to get close to this description, like I get close to frames in museums, breathe on their glass and notice the dust. I wanted to get so close my vision would blur. Yeah, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Yes, I think she's going doesn't to be... <laughs> Say yes on the dis... <laughs> in the discussion, but um, I think, I'm hoping it's going to be like a new favourite author. Yeah, I just It sounds... It's a great cover. Yeah, it sounds like my kind of thing. And, and it's on um, Night Boat Books. Mm -hmm. And it came out, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, 2016. Lovely. Um, has anyone read Paul Bowles? I have been wanting to for ages. Um, he's best known for The Sheltering Sky, I think, which is set, I think, in Morocco. Yeah. Um, this one just really appealed to me from the story on the back. Um, and the photograph of him smoking a filter cigarette with a big head. Um, His head does look enormous. In a, in a good way. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's about a couple that are holidaying in Central America and they meet this other couple who seem to be a little bit maybe sinister and they get drawn into, you know, how it goes. It's going to be good. Um, a couple more art books. So this one is Performance and Performativity by Chantelle Pompriand. I don't know how to say that name. Yeah, I think, I think he nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think this is like essays collected from different magazines around performance and perform performativity. Sounds great. Yeah, and it looks quite good. It's got like, you know, like, oh, that might be a bit saucy, but I'm sure they won't be able to. Okay. That's a Matthew, Matthew Barney. Matthew Barney's testicular anxieties, this chapter is called. I picked a, <laughs> yeah. picked a good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that sounds good. <laughs> that's that, that one. Um, okay, so I've. Um, I have never heard of this author, William Melvin Kelly, who, again, it looks like this book has just been reissued. Um, it originally came out in 1962, and it's called A Different Drummer. It's um, set in uh, the American South in the late 50s in uh, this small backwater town. 
um, in which I guess in a satirical way it, it's about the entire African-American community moving out away from the town or leaving the town and the novel is told then from the perspective of all the remaining white people and how they're coping reacting um, to this mass exodus um, yeah he's an author that I uh, have never heard of but sounds really really interesting he's the lost giant of American literature according to the New Yorker um, he's written a few other novels after this this was, this was his first which he wrote in his 20s and apparently it was a big deal at the time he okay. met up with um, Langston Hughes and they kind of He's like almost like passing on the baton to uh, William Melvin Kelly. Mm. So yeah, that's. I wonder great. if he is well known then. I, I I haven't heard of him. No, I haven't either. Yeah. I've got um, another art from Delirium and Resistance: Activist Art and the Crisis of Capitalism, by Gregory Gregory Cholette, forwarded by Lucy Lippard and edited by Kim Charnley. There's a whole bit of a mouthful. Um, again, I think it's essays. I think they're essays by Gregory Cholette, which is. Mm then be edited by someone else um but it's got a quote, quote by gorilla girls in the back i really like the gorilla girls mm -hmm. i'm really interested in activist art um i guess i'm interested in the crisis of capitalism as interested as you could be in <laughs> such things and i love lucy lippard so that's kind of yeah, swayed me as well i thought if she's done a forward for it it's bound to be I good that was a good find uh, i think yeah, you'll enjoy it i think so it says it's a follow-up to his influential book dark matter but um i don't know what that is but it says it returns to artists collectives counter institutions and activist groups that, that resist the carnage caused by neoliberal economic and social policy policies that sounds really good i'm going to save that for uh, like a smart day clever days <laughs> yes um, I wanted to read another Angela Carter because I read Love um, last year and uh, it was one of my favourite books of last year. Um, I, I don't really know what this one's about. Um, the Passion of New Eve. It's a late 70s one. It just looks really interesting. I'm kind of... Gonna... I think I've read that but I can't remember. Yeah. But I, it, do you, it's not clear from the back here if it's... Is it going more into her magical realist I have no idea. Sort of stuff, um, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to delve into some happy to Angela find out? Carter... Yeah, this year I think I'll, I'll read a few of them. Those books are from Waterstones, like those last three. Yeah. And then these two I've got from Waterstones as well, again, matching my nails mm. to this. And this is Pages for Her by Sylvia Brownrigg. And I read Pages for You, um, oh yeah, in 2018. It was last year, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And it, would, it, it was kind of up there with my favourite books, but didn't quite make the coveted top ten. But I really loved it. I, it's like a relationship between two women. One's kind of a bit older than the other. And it's just like this really kind of passionate, all-encompassing kind of relationship where nothing else matters. Yeah. Um, and then this book is 20 years later when they've gone off and had their kind of had different lives and then they're meeting again. Yeah. And um, I knew it, I knew it was like existed when I read the first one, but um, I enjoyed the person so much that, and I felt it was kind of quite perfect in itself mm -hmm. that I didn't really want to read this one. Yeah. But now there's been a little bit of time. Yeah, you're I ready think for I, can. It. I think you'll, and you'll be into it and you'll be like, oh, this is great. Yes, let's hope so. I think so. Alice Siebold says it's good. Your turn. I have really got into Misty recently, which is a British um, horror comic for girls from the late 70s, early 80s, which they... I didn't know it was British. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which they've started doing these kind of compendium volumes of. Um, I want a volume three, which seems to focus on wolf girls and like werewolves stories, um, which I'm pretty excited about. They're really good. The first one had a story called Moonchild, which was kind of very Carrie-esque. Um, I just love them. They've got a real kind of... Um, nostalgic feel to them for me because uh, they've got that kind of very early 80s did you read illustration that style i did little. read comics when i was little i didn't really read anything like this but just looking at the pictures they look really like, touch about. Track, yeah and i love a good horror comic um they're just really cute and really good i love them and then my last one is outlined by rachel cusk um one that lots of people have loved yeah 
So I, I hope you're going to like it too. And I've been wanting to read some Rachel Cuss. Mm. Um, it is, it's a novel in 10 conversations. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Does that put you off at all? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does, but I think it's going to be good anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's, I think I must have looked at it at one point and been, oh, I don't know if I, I'm, I'm yeah. good for that. And I know you, I don't love the cover either. I think the cover's great. The cover looks a bit like a, um, oh, do you know the magazine Freeze? Mm. Art magazine, it looks a bit like it's the cover yeah. of Freeze. Yeah, don't you like the, the cover? It's not the best. What do you it think? looks a bit classy. I, I, too yeah, classy, it does look classy for me. I think it's going to be really good though. Yeah. yeah. And then what's your last one? Finally, um, I treated myself to this book called Belonging uh, by Tokopa Turner. Um, it's subheaded Remembering Ourselves Home. It's non fiction. This is the author. She's lovely. I follow her on Instagram. Um, it's it's a book which um, is about a finding connection to the world. Um, and I guess through um, myth, um, uh, stories, dreams, um, and ancestral practices, it kind of gives you tips about, I guess, feeling more connected to people and to your uh, yourself uh, within the world I think it's it's quite good for that you know if you have a sense of alienation or if you ever feel like being a human being it's quite hard work sometimes um, I think this is sounds like an interesting book which I'll probably just pick through bit by bit through the year um, I just found, found it quite yeah, interesting I'd, I'd like yeah. to read that as well yeah. yeah, and so it looks like a good one. It's classified as mind, body, and spirit, and self help on the back. But I think all these books that people don't know what to do with are, are yeah. classified as that. What is it um, seeing that self rather than use the word self help, they're using the word inspirational. Inspirational. I don't know if that helps either. I think it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds a bit better than self help. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to this one. And that's all our books. It's kind of a nice mix, I think. Yeah, um, I'm really, lo I'm really looking forward to these. Yeah. yeah. So maybe let us know if you've read any, um, if you were a fan of uh, Misty back in the day. Oh yeah, is Misty any good? <laughs> Misty Volume 3? And um, we'll see you soon. Yeah, bye, bye. guys, bye.